Hey you guys, happy Friday. I'm just sitting on my front porch. It is beautiful outside. And um, I was watching Amber Lynn. I'm like watching myself in my, you know, stream right now. You guys want to see it, it's so funny. My water, I'm getting ready to go on you now. I um, was watching Amber Lynn Reads You Now stream, which is what my video is gonna be about. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited, oh my God, tomorrow. But anyway, I'm getting ready to go on live on You Now. And then um, I'm waiting for Alex to come home. He leaves tomorrow for Spring Awakening in Chicago. So I'm gonna see if he wants to get something to eat. And then we're just gonna kind of hang out here tonight and watch TV and he has got a pack for tomorrow and stuff like that, so. I'm going to do a you now stream until he comes home. All right. I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Bye. So I'm now uh, live streaming on you now. So I thought I would just turn this around and say hi to everybody. <gasps> hi, everybody. Hi, Stop and Make Noise. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Subversive Wallflower. Hi, Witch's Brew. Hi, Autumn. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Leroy. Hi, Leslie. Oh, here they come. Meredith, Samantha, Sarah, Pom Pom, Cups and Velvet, Witch's Brew, Nicole, <laughs> Lindsay, Jen, Crystallized, Britt, Sanon, Jasper, 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 Meredith, Jennifer, Caroline again, Tapper, Tony. Hey, Tapper. To Tapper's new. Leanna, Bunny Cake, Sarah, Marina. One more. Who's it going to be? <gasps> Michelle, Preston, Engage. Okay, so that was that. And uh, if you watch my UNAS stream, that was what I was doing. So it's late. It's 12.45. Well, I guess it's not as late as usual. I don't know what's going on with PP. I think he's like, knows that Alex is leaving or something because he was like acting up and he just kind of like, why does my hair look so silly? He just like attacked Boo Radley in the kitchen, like, they don't ever act that way. Like, they always get along with each other. I was so confused. We were all just kind of, like, laying there in bed talking. And then Alex said he was going to sleep. So I kissed him goodnight. And I came downstairs to make sure that, like, I'm uploading this video, this booktube video for tomorrow. And I was making sure that it was up. And, like, PP just, like, tore into Boo Radley. Boo Radley was just standing there. Boo Radley was so scared, he, like, shoved up into, the, like, the the oven. He didn't know what to think. And I don't know if PP was just playing or what's going on. And then the weirdest thing is, like, PP is completely, like, trained to not go to the bathroom in the house. And, like, I took him out yesterday. Somebody out there that knows about dogs will know what's going on. I mean, like, I don't... <sighs> I don't know if it's he's getting older or what's going on. I mean, there's no stress in the house right now, so it's not that. But, like, he came inside. I had taken him out. They were out for, like, a half an hour. And, I mean, he peed everywhere outside. He came inside. And literally, like, right in front of me, he peed. And I was like, you never do this. So, I don't know what's going on with him. He doesn't act sick at all. He acts like he's a puppy. So I don't know if he's bored or if he's pissed, but I'm there all the time. So, I mean, it's not like he doesn't get any attention. I mean, PB gets more attention than most dogs out there. I don't know if it has to do with Alex because, you know, like Alex works so much. Who knows? Isn't that weird though? So anyway, I live streamed earlier today and then I tried to upload my videos, but that took me forever to do. So I ended up, oh, Alex got home from work and then I went to the grocery store. He didn't want anything to eat. So I went to the grocery store and I got like a buffalo chicken, which is like, like deli meat chicken. It was like a wrap sandwich. It was really good. And, uh, macaroni salad and a small bag of chips and I had me a little picnic. I had me a little picnic. I had a little picnic. And it was good and I had orange juice. And I watched like 20 more minutes of that mommy, dad, and dearest. That story is just so bizarre. Like, I'm really struggling getting through it. I don't know. I don't know why. Like, it's not, it's typically something that I would watch, but like, I'm really struggling getting through it. And that's so weird. I don't know. So anyway, there's that, and then I think that's about it. 
I did a live stream tonight. I've been live streaming a lot. Oh, Alex and I got on that Helix website and we ordered our mattress to be delivered. And then we got on Amazon and ordered our platform bed and we're really excited about it because we're gonna kind of like redo our bedroom. It's not gonna all happen at once, so, so don't get so excited about it. Gonna, do you hear this? Like these roads are horrible. It's gonna kind of happen over time because we want to wood panel our entire wall. Like I've talked about that in here before. Like with like, uh, make it look kind of like a shipyard. I don't know how to explain it, but anyway, very nautical. Um, but like that takes some money and we can't do that right now. So first we're just going to get the bed and a mattress and then we're going to get two new nightstands. And then um, we have these oriental lamps that we got from my aunt. And um, when she passed away, they're gorgeous. And um, I don't know what we'll do. We'll have to talk about it. I don't know what we'll do with the painting over the bed because I also like, so my mom had an oriental painting, oriental painting. My mother had a oil painting um, over that bed when she passed away, That this gorgeous oil painting that my aunt always wanted. Is it a full moon tonight? I think it is. That my aunt always wanted. Well. When my aunt passed away, uh, my cousin Caroline gave it back to me. So that's what used to be over that bed. And it looks, it's got this huge, beautiful, like gold gilded frame. And so we may put that picture back up there instead of the picture of us. I don't know. We'll have to see what we want to do. I have like literally, I have like all of these paintings and big jars, these oriental like jars that Alex wanted that are that blue and white china. So I don't know what we're going to do, you know? It was so weird. Two things that happened. It was yesterday. I think I talked about this on my vlog. I was just completely blindsided. I did talk about this. And my mom's friend texted me. And and then um, today I was talking to my landlord from my office to renew my lease. And she was like, how's Kathy and Dave doing? How are Kathy and Dave doing? Because she used to live across the street from my aunt and uncle. And I was like, oh, Sherry, didn't you know? My aunt passed away in January. And she just was like stunned. She was like, oh my God, Peter, I didn't know. She was like, oh my God, I can't believe that Kathy's gone. I didn't know that. And she was like, she was always so good to my girls. And you know, she, anyway, she was always just a spitfire. And, um, and I got off the phone with her and I was like having this meeting with somebody and I was like having to go right into that. And I was like, ugh, cause I was like all emotional then. But you know, that's part of life, you know, it's just, and I feel like I run into people more and more all the time that are like, oh, I didn't know. And it's weird, like, with my aunt, because now it's, like, my aunt and my mom are gone. You know, it's, like, I've said this before. It's, like, the end of a generation. It's, like, the end of an era. Kind of ends with Caroline and I a little bit. And, uh, well, David, my aunt and uncle's, well, Caroline's son, like, he spent so much time with my mom and so much time with them that, like, he kind of carries that on. And he is the kid that will tell stories and have memories, you know? Like, he will be that adult. And so... I guess the memories won't be lost, you know? I don't know. It's weird getting older. I was talking to this woman today, and she said, the landlord, and she was like, it's so weird when you start getting older, and, like, everybody that you know starts, like, being gone. And she's like, it's just, like, this very strange concept. And, um... She's like, you know, you just don't even realize it. And then one second, she's like, you wake up and half the people that you knew have passed away. And I guess she's like my aunt's age. And she, I mean, she looks like she's like not even 60. So she looks good. <laughs> she always comes into the building like carrying this huge, like tight jeans and it's like oversized sweatshirt carrying this huge Louis Vuitton purse and like a cigarette in her hand. She's like, Peter, it's so great to see you. She's like such a cool woman. <laughs> anyway. I just attract such wonderful characters in my life. I love it. 
looks like I was thinking about that tonight when I was in my You Now stream. I was like, all these wonderful people. Okay, I will be right back. All right. So I'm back. I need to get some money out for tomorrow. And now I need to go and get some melatonin because I'm completely out of melatonin. I don't even know if it really helps me fall asleep. Do you guys think it works? I mean, I only take five milligrams and I take the dissolvable kind. I will say that last night I didn't take it. And this morning when I woke up, I was like alert, like immediately, like I didn't feel groggy or anything. Like sometimes I feel a little groggy when I wake up. Do you guys ever feel like that if you take it? much easier to fly and Uber it, which I have to say, after doing it this year, it is much better because we lose a day because we're so tired when we get there, but I just love the road trip. I just do. I love to road trip so much. It's like one of my favorite things. Alex doesn't really love it. He'd rather just get there, and um, like Tony and I would be a good road trip team. We need to kind of take a road trip sometime this summer maybe, but anyway, so we leave at like seven-ish. And then, so that puts us in, like, Nashville at, like, midnight, Minneapolis. And so then, like, Nashville all the way through, like, I love, so then, like, he falls asleep about 10 o'clock, and then from, like, 10 o'clock until, like, 5 or 6 in the morning, like, he'll start driving at, like, 8 or 9 in the morning, and that's usually, like, right when we hit, like, Florida, or we're a little bit into Florida, and, um... Is that right? 12 hours? Yeah, that should be about right. And, uh, but I drive it all through the night and I love to listen to like Coast to Coast AM and, uh, audiobooks. And, but I just like, I love listening to like scary, aud scary audiobooks while I'm driving and, um, you know, or Coast to Coast AM and then like listen to the people call in and I love just to see like the houses like off in the distance or the, the roads that go and it's a lot of times how I get writing ideas for books and uh, there was like some huge accident up there. But anyway, do you guys ever wonder that? You wonder like, I wonder who lives there and all that stuff, you know? It's very interesting to me. My mind just is like full of imagination. I've always been like that since I was a little kid, like a really, really imaginative kid and like always like coming up with like ideas in my head and I used to say to my friends, you know, it's funny because you think of all kids being like that, you know, and like I can remember saying to my friends like, let's play imagination and they would be like, what's that? And they'd be like, well, let's just act like we're spies. And they'd be like, no, let's play a game. And I'd be like, no, come on, please, let's act like we're spies and we're like hiding out and we're, they're going to find us and, you know, like my friends wouldn't want to do that. They're like, no, like none of my friends were like into that stuff. Like they had to have very set games. I think that we've lost that over time, you know, that idea and maybe that, I don't know, maybe I'm an old soul, you know, and it's like and kids in the English countryside playing, you know, like make believe and imagination, you know, back in the days. But there is a bug in here. Do you guys see it? It is like keeps on like flying all in front of my face. It's driving me nuts. But anyway, imagination. I wonder how we come up with those things that we want to play, you know? I always wanted to be like in hiding, like the witness relocation program, and people were chasing me. Like, why would I come up with that? Like, why would that be my fantasy, you know, as a kid that I was being chased? And I 
remember when we went and saw a play, we went and saw The Diary of Anne Frank at the um, Indianapolis Repertory Theater when I was a little kid. I probably saw that like really young and uh, with my mom. And I remember like wanting to like imagine that I live in that apartment that like Anne Frank lived in. So obviously at that age, I had no concept of what, you know, the Holocaust and those things were. Which I haven't really talked about this on here a lot, but like, that kind of history was very important to my mom when I was growing up. My mother was a raised, she was raised Episcopalian. But when they lived in Chicago, before I was born, so this would have been like 66 to 72, um, they, uh, I'll tell you something funny, but not funny, but interesting about my medication. Um, 66 to 72, my mom taught at a school called Beis Shokov, and it was an Orthodox Hebrew school, and she was the only Gentile that had ever taught there at that school. And the stories that she would tell, and she would say that there were like people, like most, almost all the parents had like the concentration camp numbers in their arms, and she said it was just like, you know, such a... culture heavy environment you know and that like if she wanted to like make cookies for the class or if they were going to do like a cooking class with the girls like she taught the girls and like somebody else taught the boys they were like divided by gender and um, anyway I just heard like grew up hearing those stories you know and she would like point to the pictures of the girls in there and she would say like their names were like Rockle and uh, just these you know beautiful young ladies and she knew all their stories and their families and she'd say I wonder what happened to her you know I wonder what happened to Rockle and you know her dad and mom were so proud and it's just it's I think we sometimes in our country we forget the importance of our own culture I think it gets washed out sometimes you know or knowing our own histories and I don't even know that I think that my own history became important to me until my mom's passing when I started to really wonder where I came from. And if you've been on here, you know, you've heard me talk about the fact that I found out that my grandma had gone to prison. And although that's not like really a culture, so to speak, I do think that it really played a huge factor. And not just once, but twice she went to prison. I think it played a huge factor, you know, in who I am today. Are you kidding me? Did it just say you two, the Joshua Tree is coming here or is that like a, a movie that's coming? Anyway, um, but I think it played a huge factor in who I am. Like I think that like my mother parented me probably made very much from a stance of having had a mother that went to prison, A, and B, having kept it a secret. Because she kept it a secret, I never knew. She never told me, my dad told me after my mom passed away. Um, so, you know, it's interesting to think that way, that, like, the stigma of that probably, like, long-term effect. You know, my cousin Carolyn and I talk about this all the time. Like, neither one of our mothers told us that. We don't know really anything about their childhood other than our grandfather died when our mothers were four and six. And that my grandmother was very, very poor. And she was a bookkeeper. And that they changed schools, like, ten times between, like, kindergarten and senior year. And that she gave my mom and my aunt everything. They each had their own car in high school. And she never, she took the bus while they drove. And, you know, every, they went to IU and Bloomington. And everybody thought they were, like, these very rich girls. But they came from this very poor background. And, you know, one of the things that I remember that's interesting about my grandma is that my grandmother was, like, somebody that, like, like, her hair was always perfect. Her nails were always perfect. You know, she could cook unbelievably. She was very calm, very serene. And, like, manners were very important to my grandmother. But she wasn't cold at all. Like, and I can remember she just sat there and smoked. And she would teetotal her. She would never drink. She hated alcohol. And I think my grandfather was an alcoholic. I, I think. We're not sure. Because um, my grandmother hated drinking. She hated when my mom and my aunt drank. And, um... So she would like drink like those, do you remember those Cokes that came in the little bottles? My grandma would drink those like crazy and just smoke Salem lights like they were going out of business. And coffee, she loved coffee. And um, I can just see her sitting there like on our porch just smoking one cigarette after another with the dog right next to her. She loved the dog. And um, my grandma was so good with dogs. And 
it's funny, like, that's how I'll forever remember my grandma, but then I wonder, like, you know, the time that she was gone, like, when I finally confronted my aunt a couple years ago about my grandma being in prison, she acted like it wasn't even really that big of a secret, but she was like, your dad should never have told you, like, your mom didn't want him, you to know, and I was like, said something about, like, when it would have happened, like, when they were little girls, and my aunt was like, no, I was your mother's guardian, it was, like, her last year of high school or something, so this is so bizarre, like, my mom is a senior in high school, my aunt is in Bloomington, Indiana, my mom is up here, basically, probably living alone, you know, except she had a stepfather at the time, it's all of it, just so weird, if I even told you more of the history, you'd be like, this whole thing is so bizarre, so, you know, it's like, I don't know, like, how much of your history do you really know? And then you think about that as conditioning, socially conditioning somebody. Then my mother parented me as the product of that. And yet I never knew that. You know what I mean? Like, I never knew that huge piece that was there. And um, I think that's kind of paramount to my history, don't you? And to my cousin's history. Like, that's a pretty big part of our history not to know. Especially when, like, we're sitting there talking at the funeral, my aunt's funeral, and, like, all of our mother's closest friends knew this detail. Like, it was not a secret that they didn't talk about. Like, they talked about it. They just never talked about it to Caroline and I, you know? And, like, we're the ones that are affected by it the most. So, it's interesting when you look at your, you know, your family's history, and not just culturally, but, like, how they were raised, you know, where they were raised, things like that. And the reality is all of that affects us. You know, all of it affects us as people. So... It's very interesting, I think, when you think that way, you know. Books influence us, movies influence us. You know, I did a whole book, I did a whole booktube video on my booktube channel about uh, To Kill a Mockingbird and how, like, had that book, had I never read that book or seen that movie, because I both, I think they both equally impacted me. And this is going up on the same day that I did a, another video about To Kill a Mockingbird, because I want to do a read-along for it this summer. And, um, because last night I got really stuck watching all of these interviews with Mary Badham, who played Scout, um, in To Kill a Mockingbird. I loved that character. And, um, I so related to Scout. And, um, you know, I did this booktube video where I talked about the fact that had I never read the book or seen the movie, yeah, I wouldn't be who I am today. You know, that that book forever changed me. You know, certain words put together in a sentence, think about that. Certain words put together in a sentence forever change who I am as a person. You know, I never get that quote right that Atticus says to Scout, you know, after where she's making fun of Walter Cunningham at lunch and, uh, so he talks to her outside and he says, you know, Scout, you never really know somebody until you step inside of their skin for a while. And she says, sir. And he says, you know, until you walk in their shoes around their front porch for a while, you never really know what that person's like. And I can remember like when I was old enough to really understand what that meant, you know, and it really meant don't judge somebody until you really understand where they're coming from. And, um, scene at the end, you know, when the door opens in the movie and Scout sees Boo for the first time, and she says, hey, Boo, and just that innocence, you know, over her, and he's just as scared as she is, and I think that that message in that one minute, you know, if, well, there's so many messages, but that one second, when he like, he moves out, he wants to move into the shadows, because he's lived in the shadows, you know, and he's afraid, and um, she's no longer afraid of him, and she pulls him out, you know, and I think like, it's such a valuable lesson to us in society of, why are we afraid of one another? Is it because we don't really know each other? Is it because we're not a lot, we're not willing to put our hand out to that person? It's sad, isn't it? When we our fear of saying hello that could change so much, you know? 
just easier to stay on the other side of the street and be neighbors that don't know each other. It's like I met my neighbor the other night. Well, I've met her a couple times, but we went over there and we sat there and talked to her for a while and they were drinking and having beers and stuff with Alex and we had such a good time and then she walked by today and I've been teasing her and it's like so nice to have a neighbor like that, you know, and it's like she went out of her way to come and say hi to me and knock on my door. This 23-year-old girl, I loved it. She's like, hey, we just want to know if you guys want to come over for a drink. And um, she didn't have to do that, you know? We need more people like that in the world. I think the world was a happier place when we knew our neighbors and we knew our teachers and we respected our teachers and we didn't call them by first names. We called them Mrs. So-and-so and Mr. So-and-so. And, you know, when I grew up, we didn't call our parents friends by their first names. I had one or two friends of my parents that I called by their first name because they were literally like family. Other than that, it was Mrs. and Mr. So-and-so always. And uh, it was funny because for years, I lived next door to this woman, we'll just say her last name was Smith, and her first name was Judy, because you know I love the name Judy Smith, and um, when I went into treatment, she was my detox nurse, and I didn't even know she had worked at this treatment facility that I ended up working at later, well, I ended up working there for 13 years, okay, I mean, I grew up next to this woman from like first grade all the way through high school, and every day I would see her and I'd say, Mrs. Smith, how are you doing? It's so good to see you, Miss. I mean, I saw her every day for 13 years that I worked there. You know, I cannot tell you how many times she'd say to me, Peter, you do not need to call me Mrs. Smith. You can call me Judy. We work together. You know, what? I'm like, no, Mrs. Smith, I can't. I mean, you'll forever be Mrs. Smith to me. You know, I just like, I feel like a, lost, a lot has been lost in that. You know, like, I feel like in a, a lot of ways, it's like we want to be free livers and we want to, hey, you know, don't call me Mr. Jones, call me John, you know, like, let me get on your level. And that's great. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. But, you know, like, I think there's a lot lost in the ritual of respect and politeness and tradition, you know, and it makes me sad. It's like, I don't know. to see a little bit more of that, I think. I don't really think it makes a huge difference. But, you know, now we have students back talking their teachers and stuff. I don't, I mean, I honest to God don't remember that stuff when I was growing up. And maybe it was the schools I went to and whatever, but my mom taught in really hard schools. And I don't remember her ever coming home and saying stuff like that. I mean, every once in a while she would say, oh my God, this student is just like giving me such a hard time. But not like, 10 students in every class, you know, and she taught in inner city schools, and it wasn't like she, you know, every class was, like, out of control, you know, like, I really think it's part of the, like, the times, you know, it's sad to me, it's like a lost generation, you know. And I feel like even these shows that we see, like, the Rich Kids of Beverly Hills and the Kardashians, and, I mean, these are just people with a lot of money, so I don't know if that really means anything. But, you know, all these people that we see that have, like, a lot of money, that were educated correctly, they're still rude as shit, right? You know? Give me a country boy or girl that is showing at 4-H at the state fair that will say, Mr. Mon, you know, how are you doing today? Oh, you want me to show you how to, like you know, star this, uh, deep, this lamb or whatever, you know what I'm talking, like when they walk into star, oh yes, I would love to show you that, and you know, oh, I get up at five o'clock in the morning, and I, you know, help with my farm on my family, what happened to that, what happened to that, you know, like, I don't give a rat's ass about how much money you have, and you know, what school you went to, and all of that's fine and well, and you know, you're going to tramp San Tropez for the summer, and that must be awful glitzy, but you have no respect for anybody, not really, even yourself. And I think it's sad. I think that we need to gain some of that back a little bit. You know, I think we need to take back some class. And my mother always taught me that class has nothing to do with how much money you have or where you came from, which in retrospect, it makes sense why she said that. But that class is how you treat somebody. You know, and class is how you talk about yourself. And a class is how you talk about others. Sometimes I don't have a lot of class. I'll be the first one to admit that, you know. Never 
forget where you came from. We all came from the same place. So just remember that, you know, none of us is better than anybody else. There is nothing more disgusting to me than arrogance and cockiness. Undeserved. Now listen, I can kind of bear with it if it's somebody that has like four PhDs and they teach at Harvard and they've spent their entire life, you know, studying like one book. Okay, you have a right to be a little arrogant about that. You know what I'm saying? Or if you're a neurophysicist, you know, from MIT, you have a right to be a little arrogant about that. Okay? Naomi Campbell, she has a right to be a little arrogant about fashion. Let's just be for real. Okay, these people are geniuses in their field. But undeserved arrogance and entitlement, I can't stand. Like, it, like there is nothing more that, like, just turns me off than that. Like, I just love humble, simple people because that's what I am, you know? I'm just, like, really... Cut off jean shorts like I have on right now. Flip flops. My flip flops. I looked to show to Alex and I held it up. I go, you can see through my flip flop. I have a hole. I have a hole in my damn flip flop, and I'm so bro I'm not so broke. I'm so lazy. I won't go buy more because I love these that I have on so much. But you know that's just who I am. Fountain cokes and reality TV and you know watching Netflix. I'm so excited. Orange is the new black comes on at midnight tonight. I can't wait. It's already midnight, but can't wait to start watching it but you know like isn't that life to me like I just love it I love that life you know fire fireflies and the country I can see them right now everybody was asking about that in my live stream it's like if you sit here and you like watch like the fields I'm going by you can see them and they just go off like that it's so cool smell of fresh cut grass and chlorine in a pool wafting over the neighborhood oh my god Laffy Taffy at the city pool and nachos. I miss those days. I love the city pool. I love when you go to the city pool in August and it's like so hot and you get into it and it's like ice cold and you're like bobbing with your friends. But there's never any chairs in the city pool so you always have to just lay your uh, towel down like on the cement. I love that. And staying up late and sitting in the grass with your friends in the summer and it's still hot and sticky at like 85, 90 at like 2 o'clock in the morning as you drink like slushies and your hands are sticky. That's summer. Like, I love that simple life. I wouldn't trade that in for anything. I love it. So much fun. So I guess then I will go and enjoy that. I'm going to get my melatonin now and then I'm going to go home and I'm going to watch an episode of Orange is the New Black. So... I hope you guys are enjoying your summer already. We've had nice weather in Indiana so far. This summer has been nice. All right, I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Oh, don't forget, it's Pee Pee and Peter's Bachelor Weekend. It's Pee Pee and Peter's Bachelor Weekend. Don't worry about us. Good night.